hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Capturing the Game, the game within the game. I'm your host, Brady Spenfowler, and I'm joined here with my co-host, Desmond Jones. Today we have the opportunity to talk to certified NFLPA contract advisor with Independent Sports and Entertainment and Fort Wayne native, uh, Javon Barnes. Javon has had the opportunity to play in the NFL and has previously coached at uh, Northrop and Bishop Lures High School located in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, without further ado, we'd like to give a warm welcome to Javon Barnes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. Um, so first question that we're going to go with is just give a little um, background of yourself so the listeners and viewers um, listening at home can just uh, get to know you a little bit more. Uh, like you said, I'm a Fort Wayne native, uh, born and raised. Uh, went to Southside High School at first. Uh, ended up at Bishop Lewis High School. Uh, after Bishop Lures, uh, I went to uh, Notre Dame on a football scholarship and uh, end up finish up at, at, uh, at Central Michigan. I had the opportunity to get uh, picked up by the uh, New York Jets for a little bit and um, played in NFL Europe with the Hamburg Sea Devils. Uh, after football, um, bouncing around from um, NFL Europe, Arena League and all that, um, and uh, in the Canadian League, I, I went to Fort Wayne Community Schools. I was a uh, I was a substitute teacher at first, and then I transitioned to uh, uh, the office. Then I transitioned again into a central office, uh, and I was the head of uh, all transfers and enrollment for a couple of years. And then I uh, landed and really uh, found my true calling. Uh, being a sports agent and uh, and helping these young men, uh, you know, navigate through this roller coaster ride of a professional career, and uh, I've been doing uh, this since uh, it's almost a decade now. So uh, it's been a roller coaster ride for myself <laughs> as well. You know, so it's a little bit about myself. Yeah. So with each stop, was it just like a, a learning curve or with you trying to figure out what you wanted to do until you like truly found what you was, what you was truly passionate about? Well, uh, I always want to, to help uh, young men in some capacity. Um, I watched my father do it. I watched uh, his partner do it, uh, Eugene Parker. Uh, you know, my father, Roosevelt Barnes, they've been, you know, they were doing it for decades. Um prior to me and uh, I, I find I found it all fascinating uh, seeing how I mean they've got these legendary athletes and they're talking to them and advising them and I mean some of them you know they're I mean me doing what I'm doing now I realized you know they're they're young men they're kids they're in their early 20s you know and uh, but they're they surrounded themselves with great men. These, these great athletes are surrounding themselves with great men. And I wanted to be a part of that in some, in some way. So I kind of knew I was going to end up where, uh, where I am today. I just didn't want to go to school, go back to school and get my MBA uh, to do it and, and then take the test and uh, the NFLPA test. Cause I heard it was a hard test, you know, but I eventually did it. And um, I'm, I'm in a blessed position now. So uh I'm forever grateful. No, I think that's uh, absolutely wonderful. And I definitely understand that NBA struggle because I'm definitely going through that right now. It is not fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no joke. <laughs> no, that's good. That's what uh, I've been thinking about going back for mine. And I'm just on the, the in-between. I like this this off time uh, in-between, so I don't have to worry about it, but thinking about it, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. So I know you mentioned your father. So is was your father like the one that that kind of like inspired to who you to you know to where you are today? Yeah, uh, I always looked up to my father. He's like a superhero to me. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my first memories uh, ever in life was going to his football games when I was four or five years old. I remember you know, getting in the car. And I thought it was a long ride up to the Pontiac Silverdome uh, and watching him, watching people like Billy Sims and, 
and all those greats back then. Uh, I still remember to this day him playing against, uh, you know, the greats like uh, Dan Marino and all those guys. And the only reason why I halfway remember him is because uh, I had uh, little kids books with Dan Marino and all those guys in them. And I was more excited about them than my father at times, you know, but, um, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great experience watching him during those years. And then it was the even a greater experience when I got older and he helped me, uh, you know, throughout my athletic career. Uh, and, and during that time, I watched him uh, work with guys like Lavernius Coles and Derek Brooks and Walter Jones. And, and I mean, and, and again, those guys are uh, all pros, pro bowlers and Hall of Famers. And, you know, watching him prepare them, um, you know, for the journey, uh, it was just fascinating to watch. No, that that's also that's really cool. So what that journey? So how did that just um, shape um, how your journey has been? Just um, seeing your dad do it, how has that shaped uh, your journey into the role you're at now with like any obstacles you've overcome or uh, anything like that? Well, uh, I have a unique experience uh, in my profession because many individuals uh, don't have a mentor like. I had, you know, I had two great ones, uh, two legendary ones. And, um, you know, I still have one today. Uh, my father, I, I mean, I can call him at any moment. And, and if I have an issue or a problem or something I'm uh, struggling with, I mean, he's right there. He's seen everything under the sun. And, um, you know, that's, I mean, it's a blessing because many people get in this business uh, and they just don't know what they don't know. I mean, it's, it's something where, I mean, it, it, it's not a, I mean, you can't, it's not a cookie cutter way that you can deal with, uh, with issues, problems, uh, and, and even the success. Um, and having that mentor, having that guide, having that person who's done it um, has been a blessing for me. And it's uh, put me in a position where I am today. Yeah, I, I totally understand that because I know what, for, for myself personally, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for someone that kind of led me along the way or I had someone that I could pick up the phone and call be like, hey, I need help with this because I don't know what I'm looking at is in a foreign language. I know it's English, but it still looks foreign to me. And, and um, I think it's just, you know, fantastic that you had your, you know, your father there that can um that, that could help you along the way because not not many you know African Americans males can say that you know it's you know it's a sad reality that we live in. Um, but uh, I know one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, you know, what were some of the biggest challenges that you have um, right now in the industry? Oh, uh, I think the biggest challenge right now is. Uh probably trying to figure out uh, what these, this new generation wants. And, mm -hmm. um, you, know, I, you know, being a, you know, a, a agent or a service leader or, um, you know, a, a partner, a guide. Um, some guys just want someone they can hang out with <laughs> all the time. And, and, and for, the, for, for those people, I don't think I'm their cup of tea because uh, I'm more of an educator. I'm more of a, uh, of a person that is going to push you towards greatness. And sometimes that push, it might not come nice. And uh, we live in an age where, um, you know, these young guys, they're celebrities well before they hit the NFL scene. You know, they've been catered to and, and, uh, and coddled, uh, you know, for almost a decade before their name is called in the draft. Uh, but I only know how to, I only know one way to do it. And, and that's, you know, the way I was taught. Uh, one, you have to be educated, you know, about the process because, yeah, you can be catered and, and coddled. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you, know, you can lose your leverage like that uh, by not being educated. And, you know, so if you're not about that, if you're not about being pressed and being pushed to, uh, to be better than you were yesterday, then, you know, maybe I'm not your guy. But if you are about that, and I know that's the, uh, that is the recipe and the formula for success because we've seen it on numerous occasions. You know, my, my father has been associated with seven Hall of Famers. You know, I've been associated, um, you know, with a Hall of Famer. Uh, at the tail end of his career. And, you know, there's only one way to do it, in my opinion. And, um, you know, that way is, is again, pressing towards greatness, being educated, and making sure uh, that you improve on a daily basis. No, that, that's good. And do you find, just with that, because, you know, just the one way and that's how you're taught, do you find it any like any struggles with when you're talking with um, players to try to agent them and whatnot? Do you find any struggles with the fact of you're trying to tell them, like, this is the way, like, this is how it's, like, worked and this is what I want to do for you? Do you find any, like, um, pushback or feedback that they give to you when you're trying to just, like, educate them and explain of the process and how to get where they need to go? Well, yeah, there's um, there's always times uh, when you do get that feedback, you know, from these, hey, these guys, uh, they're, they're not scared to talk. <laughs> they're not scared to tell you what they want. And which, I mean, hey, you're in the client service business, you know, so uh, you you do have to cater to some of those needs. And, and, and uh, a lot of these guys, though, uh, they want the dessert before the meal. Uh, they want the things uh, before uh, they become a great player. And I never am the one that, that suggests that you should put the cart before the horse. I think you need to embrace the grind and embrace the journey. And the good things will come, you know, if you do things right. And you need to be surrounded by a wise counsel, not by yes men. And um, I know, uh, I tend to lean on the wise counsel side of the coin. Uh, I'm not a, a yes man. And, um, you know, but that's, you know, that's what some of these guys want, you know, and at the end of the day, I tell them you are the boss, you know, but you are hiring me to, uh, make sure that you're in a better position. You're hiring me for my expertise on contract structure and contract language and um, making sure that you keep your leverage uh, when you do have it. And, uh, and again, sometimes those conversations are the nicest, you know, but I can go to sleep every night knowing that I did my best to make sure that I, I kept my clients out of harm's way. No, I think that's uh, like, what I'm hearing is like you know your role, you know your identity, you know what you what you stand for, which is that that wise part. And I think that's I think that's critical in any you know any you know facet of life that you need to know your identity. You know you need to know your role. You know what you stand for and what you do and what you're not going to do. So, and I, I appreciate you not being a yes man. So, I mean that goes a long way because you don't want to bend in into any types of trend that's going on or bend it to someone's will just to just to please them and you know that's not what's best for them so i appreciate you for standing up and you know always pushing towards greatness and just being educated and doing so um what's what's some of your biggest accomplishments that you have so it was like you signing your first athlete like that finally moment of like, yes, I finally made it, or was there like another moment that like you had as like your biggest accomplishment thus far that you had? Uh, well, signing any player is a big accomplishment for me uh, from, you know, I've, I got undrafted free agents uh, mm -hmm. that I've signed, you know, like a Hardy Nickerson or uh, a Ryan Neal and seeing their progress, seeing how they've grown uh, throughout their NFL careers, got, you know, multiple chances uh, to be a part of teams. And, and when their number was called, uh, you know, they took advantage of them. And, you know, those guys are doing great all the way to, you know, this recent year, this recent past couple of years. Uh, you know, I 
signed a Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith, a uh, great young man, uh, will run through a wall um, for you, uh, and he's willing to put in the work. Um, just like his uh, former teammate, Henry Rugg, same thing, and cut from the same cloth. Um, and, and, and not just those guys, not just the potential first rounder in the first rounder. I mean, even guys who, uh, you know, they, they, they had some, some challenges along the way, like uh, a Cam Dantzler. Um, you know, he's, last year he was a rookie. He was a, projected to be a first rounder. Uh, things didn't go absolutely his way uh, throughout the process. He slipped to the third, you know, but I told him he needs to keep the faith and keep, you know, making sure that you uh, put yourself in a position uh, to be great. And he did that. He became a starter with uh, Minnesota. And um, he's on the path to doing even greater things. He made a couple all rookie teams. Uh, same thing with, uh, you know, Mike, uh, Mike Iwanu. Um, you know, he's a guy that slipped in the sixth round. He lost some weight and he's, he was a starter the whole year. Uh, so there's plenty of examples. And I just gave you a few um, that were some highlights. Um, being a part of uh, top 10 deals, um, you know, being a part of that Allen Robson deal um, a few years ago with my father, uh, that was a, a great accomplishment. Uh, being a part of uh, Dante Fowler's deal, um, you know, that was a great ap accomplishment. A guy who also had to run into uh, a couple of things of uh, adversity and he got over him and uh, he's in a great place down in Atlanta. You know, so uh, just to name one wouldn't be uh, accurate because, I mean, I think all those things, uh, I put them at the top because it's all part of the journey. Um, you know, so I know that's a long-winded answer for that. No, we no, we like that for sure. All the players that, that you've had the opportunity um, to be agent for and just – um, going with that off of just the numerous ones you listed, just what is that feeling like of just being able to help them accomplish their dream of being in the NFL? Like these these guys were probably growing up as kids, just one day they're thinking, I'm going to make it to the NFL. And what is that that sense of feeling for you to be able to help them accomplish that dream, whether it be a first round, second round, sixth round pick in the NFL draft? Uh it's almost like, I know you work for them as the agent. I know they call us agents. I, I, I really consider myself like a life manager and as a guy, uh, but you know, they call us agents, but you know, I know you work for them, but it's almost like uh, when they get drafted or they get, you know, picked up uh, in free agency, uh, they're like your little brother or kid. Yeah, I'm almost so as some of these kids' fathers now. I mean, man, I'm, knock on the door at 40 but uh it's like seeing your own child uh accomplish their dream and you know I've, I've cried during the draft um I cried even after the draft when free agents um got picked up because you know the, these these young men you know when they get to know you they they, they share their stories they share the struggle they share uh, everything they had to go through to get to the point where they are today. And I mean, I wear my heart mostly. People that know me, they know I'm a big crybaby. I mean, I probably cry all the time. Uh, but it's, it's tears of joy because, you know, you, you realize you're blessed that you're a part of that journey. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great feeling. No, I think that's a wonderful and, and it, for the record, it is okay to cry. Men do cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, I've been told that on numerous occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I know I cry. I would cry in a heartbeat if my, my wife called me sensitive all the time. So I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not the, uh, you know, the, the hardest uh, when it comes to, you know, soft moments. I'm 
I'm I'm like a baby on that one, man. I, I'll straight tear up. So yeah. Um man, so I, I love hearing about so many uh some of the athletes' stories um uh, just following on because I me and my me and my family, we watch the draft all the time just to be able to hear uh you know different uh athlete stories, some of their backgrounds, some of their beginnings, some of their journeys and stuff that um is there any particular like player that you represent? that there's a story out there that people just don't know about that people should go do their research on and to go find out, you know, who this person is and we'll find out more about them. Mm, let's see. For the, for the most part, they know a lot about our gut. Well, you know, Ryan Neal's story uh, is an interesting one because mm -hmm. You know, he here's a kid. His brother played in the NFL. My father represented his brother, Mike Neal. He went to Purdue a few years ago, uh, and then he went, uh, got drafted by the Green Bay Packers, had a successful career in Green Bay. Uh, but Ryan, who I represent, um, he went undrafted, went to uh, Southern Illinois, safety, uh, super athletic, super fast. I uh, really didn't get any offers. Um, and in his co collegiate career, he didn't make all conference. He didn't have all the accolades, but uh, there was something about him. Uh, there was some, and he's from Gary. You know, anybody I know from Gary, they got that grit and that, that grind. He's from the 219. He's from the region. Yeah, he, he is from the region. And I mean, and if you meet him, for, if you meet him, you'll know he's from Gary the first minute you talk to him. I mean, everybody I know from Gary, they they on a different level but anyway, you know, so he goes and he goes to this NFL draft process, doesn't get his name, doesn't get his name called. Uh, he had stops in uh, Philly in Atlanta uh, and didn't work out uh, in those two places. Then he goes to Seattle. Uh, my cousin, Jason, Jason Barnes, um, you know, he's a scout for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you know, he's been there over a decade. He's always had his eye on him. And uh, he was telling the front office, hey, man, there's something there with Ryan Neal. Um, so eventually got to Seattle and I uh, played special teams. Eventually became a starter this year. I mean, everything just came together. Uh, and, you know, he's about to sign uh, another contract with Seattle and uh, he's really in their plans for the future. And he, he is a guy that thought about not playing football at one point. And again, this is a guy whose brother had major success at Purdue, got drafted. I mean, went to Green Bay, won the Super Bowl. I mean, so, I mean, he was in, you know, he was underneath his brother's shadow for a little bit. And uh, things didn't work out with injuries and, and um, him bouncing around a little bit. And, you know, it was a struggle for him. Uh, but he found uh, that grit. He found that grind, uh, even when it was tough. Uh, and uh, it got him through. And, I mean, he's in a great position uh, with a great team. And, I mean, he's a guy that uh, I know the best yet come for him. So, Great story. Check him out. Look up some articles. He's a great kid. Yeah, I'm I'm already a fan. You say you was from Gary. I'm like, yep, I gotta I gotta go follow this person. So my my mom's from Gary, Indiana. So every time every time I hear about somebody from Gary, I always gotta refer him no matter what. So yeah, well, he's from that Gary Merrillville, you know. Yeah. He he claims like both I you know, he, he just claims the region. So yeah. uh I get I know. get it. <laughs> yeah, he claims that whole region, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I truly get it. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely follow him from now on. So mm -hmm. I like it. So just going, I mean, transitioning, I guess, into um, not so like the NFL realm, just about um, Fort Wayne growing up there. What is it? What was it like when you're able to coach in the area and just uh, giving back? during your time um, back in Fort Wayne? Uh, it was great because um, 
you know, like I said, I've always had a passion for, uh, you know, helping young men, you know, go through uh, this journey. I mean, I went through it. I had great people helping me. I was, you know, and again, I'm, I'm not like, you know, many other kids. I had an NFL uh, player as a father in my home, and he exposed me to other NFL players, and I had a whole bunch of mentors that uh, I was blessed to have. So I brought all that um to you know uh Northrop's and Bishop Lewis locker rooms and you know you got to see great talent you got to coach against great talent I remember coaching against Rod Smith who my father and I represent and um you know he, he's uh you know he's had a, a great career uh so far uh in the NFL and I remember when he was a young pup and you saw something in him back then that he was different from everybody else. Um, you know, so seeing that, seeing these kids grow and not, not just the, the, the football talent, uh, there are kids that I, I, I've witnessed, uh, you know, on the field or in the classroom and they're businessmen and business women now. And, uh, just seeing them out on the street or seeing them at their jobs or, or just interacting with them. Um, I mean, it's, it's great because they are, uh, you know, they, they, I mean, they're doing something great for themselves, for the family, for the community. Uh, and uh, it's just making all of us better. Uh, it's, they're moving the needle uh, forward where it needs to be, you know, so. It's just, it was just great to see these young men and women become great adults. I understand that. Uh, do you miss coaching at all? Uh, you know what? No, not really. That that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't my calling, man. Um, even though I know I could have been good at it if I, you know, kept doing it and going to the seminars. Uh, you know, I was, I was an offensive coordinator and uh, I, I was a wide receivers coach. And, um, and, I, and again, I, I was one of those people, uh, and you ask anybody that, uh, that worked with me or uh, who knew me at the time, uh, I would stay up all night watching film. I would bring kids over. Actually, there's one kid that I mentor now. Uh, he's a coach now, at the University of Indianapolis. His name is Quinn Schaefer. He was one of... Uh, first students who um who allowed me to be his mentor and i like so we talk to this day uh you know we would watch film all night um <laughs> and my my wife she was like man uh we're gonna have to adopt this kid because he's over my house all the time you know so uh i mean it, it's it's something that i miss parts of it but I know uh, I was I was called to do what I'm doing now, uh, not coaching. <laughs> no, I get it. Every, everyone has a lane that they they that they that they know they're good at and they stick to. So uh, trust me, I get I understand that. Um, so going back to like the your NFL career, so I know you told us that you played in. The, you bounce around in, in uh, a couple of different leagues. You played in the NFL, you played in the Europe, and you played in Canada. Can you tell us about that experience? Well, uh, it was that was a crazy experience because me, if I if I would have known, or I've known now back then, I would have did things way different. I transferred way too many times in, in college. Uh, and destroyed my draft status. Um, my my dad are, is still friends with a lot of GMs and player personnel people who were player personnel people and GMs uh, back then. And uh, they said, yeah, your son, um, yeah, your son just bounced around way too much, man. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll know if, uh, you know, he'd be ready to, to, to deal with this NFL roller coaster that he's trying to get into. And, and uh, you know, they were right. I mean, I was hot-headed. I was a high school All-American that 
uh, you couldn't tell anything to back then. Uh, I was I was bullheaded. Uh, I was too arrogant at times. Uh, got in arguments with coaches and and all that, and was impatient. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my NFL experience it humbled me because I didn't get, I, even though I didn't even have I mean, my college career wasn't great at all, but I still expect and I was like, oh man, you know, maybe I get my name called, even though no, I know now there's no way I, I, I was going to get my name called and it never did. Uh, but I ended up signing a free agent uh, deal with, with the New York jets. And um, I went up there, uh, man, I, I ran through a few walls. I was on every special teams and, um, you know, I was running with, uh, you know, guys like Ty Law, who's a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, Lavernus Coles was my teammate. Um, man, it was, it was a great experience. And uh, they kept me around. Uh, you know, I was, and I was still hot-headed then because, and I still believe to this day, I was better than a couple of guys that got activated. And, um, you know, but again, knowing the business, uh, I had, you know, I still had to, there was a lot more work I needed to do and I needed to uh, embrace the grind and continue to work. And uh, when Herm Edwards told me I was going to NFL Europe, I thought it was a great opportunity. Uh, I led the team in touchdowns in, in NFL Europe and, and uh, I came back and uh, there was a new coach Eric Mangini, and uh, they had a new a new direction. Uh, so, uh, to make a long story short, that that marriage didn't last long with me because I went. I remember I went to Eric Mangini's office uh, because all of the um, the physical drills that we did, I was either number one or number two, uh, but I wasn't getting a lot of reps. And I said, "Hey, what's going on?" And uh, you know that conversation didn't go well. And I, I told my father, I, oh, man, I want to get out of here. And that was a dumb decision because they said, okay, yeah, you're out of here. And then uh, went to a few tryouts and then things didn't pop off. You know, so that's why I bounced around a little bit. And, um, you know, that was a dark time for me, you know, but I take all those experiences and um, I pass it along to the guys I represent today. And I want I want them to be better than me. Um, and I believe I, I had to experience that uh, to be where I am today. Uh, and I got a son, uh, Juni, Jovan Jr. And if he chooses to, uh, you know, play sports and go go down this path, trust and believe he he won't make the same mistakes I, I did. Um, and uh, that that was that was a challenging time, but I think it did um, help me along my journey. I like that. Just uh, out of all of that, all the inspiration, all that you just dropped, is there just one? If you could uh, sum it up in just like a one sentence, just for the people listening and uh, watching this, is there one information to say the high school or the person going to college that's wanting to make that next step? in whatever sport they may be doing, do you have like a sentence or piece of advice that just you can give to them? Uh, I would say be patient, you know, uh, be patient and, and embrace the journey because, you know, right now we're living in a microwave society and things aren't gonna happen instantly. And sometimes when you are patient and when you allow things to develop, good things happen. And, you know, you can't cheat the grind, you can't. And um, I think at times I was not patient, I was impatient and it cost me, cost me a lot, you know, but at the end of the day, like I said, um, it helped me get to where I am today and it's going to help me in the future. 
Um, uh, that's that's something that that's relevant, you know, for myself. Just being patient. Um, one thing I was going to ask you, going back to like your NFL career, because I'm I'm curious, man. Uh, what what are uh what was maybe I'll ask what what was your favorite coach that you had or like interacted with during the course of your professional career? Uh, you know what? It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a positional coach. It was the weight, uh, the, the strength coach. His name was, his name was uh, Marcus Paul, passed away uh, a couple months ago. He, um, he was most recently the Dallas Cowboys strength coach. And uh, I'm home at tears now because, you know, he was, because, you know, the NFL is a cutthroat business and I know it. I've lived, you know, I lived it as an NFL son, uh, you know, briefly as an NFL player now, but I, I represent NFL players and it's cutthroat. And, you know, a lot of people say they love you, but, you know, there ain't a lot of love there uh, unless they pay you. But I truly believe, um, and again, I'm, and hold back tears thinking about it. Um, he took the time when he didn't have to. Uh, he, he would wake me up five, six o'clock in the morning. I'd get a call, say, hey, uh, you need to get up so we can get some extra work in. And we would do, and again, I'm an undrafted free agent. I mean, I'm, I'm not even a first rounder, but he took the time to uh, help me survive another week survive another week you know because when you're an undrafted free agent you get cut any day i mean it your, your day can come. i've seen it on numerous occasions guys got cut um they were eating lunch and they couldn't even finish their lunch <laughs> you know they had to hand in their playbook before uh before they ate their mashed potatoes so marcus paul out of all the coaches professionally, he was the guy that um, I know he actually cared about me. And every time I saw him, uh, you know, I've seen him either at the combine or somewhere else. I always told him, I said, uh, you told me that um, I was going to make it when I didn't think I, I, I didn't even think I was going to make it myself. And uh yeah, that's uh, man. That's man. You see, I told you I was a crier, man. You're gonna make me cry on that one, dude. You got me over here. <laughs> yeah, I know because that was a tough time, man. Um, I just had my first kid, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna feed that little that little girl, and um, yeah, but he got me through it, man. He uh, he he was special. Special yeah. man. But I'm definitely sorry to, to hear about that loss. Um, I know there's so many times we hear about these people passing, and I know, like, uh, each, you know, yeah. professional sports have their own community, and only, only within that community, you know what's really, truly going on. You know people's characters. You know the makeup of people. You know what people have done for other people. And I think it's... Um, I think it's so many stories out there, you know, similar to what you just said, uh, mentioned that, you know, that, you know, go out of the way to do, to go the extra mile for people. And, you know, and oftentimes they don't get the credit that they, that they deserve. And, you know, that's also unfortunate. Yeah. It's, um, I'll, I'll make this quick point. You know, me being a sports agent for NFL athletes, um, you know, you you um, you get to see this up close and personal. Football is a sport where you can't just play it like basketball. You can you can go on the blacktop and play it after you get done playing. I mean, there's a professional leagues overseas. Uh, you can casually play. I mean, you can play it in many different forms. I mean, you can kind of do that too in football, but it ain't the same. Right, right. And, it, and it, for most people, it ain't the same. Uh, every 
NFL athlete knows, or, and not just NFL athletes, I mean, college, high school, you know that last day you put the pads on and it means something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a tough time. That's a tough, that's tough. You know, I've been wanting to, you know, become a, uh, a professional football player since I was, shoot, well, I wanted, I just wanted to see my dad when I was five and six, but I really wanted to play and be a professional football player when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And when that last day, and I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember the last time I put the pads on, um, you know, that was tough. And, um, you know, so going back to Marcus, um, for him to take the time to make sure that, uh, that, 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 that day when we were working out wasn't going to be my last day, uh, that was very special for me. And, I mean, like I said, I still think about it to this day. No, that, that's good, too. And that's kind of where uh, we're going with this the Capturing the Game podcast. We're just trying to find that game within the game. And what you've speaked out today and with what you've gone through with being in the NFL and then helping these uh, young men grow through their sport and try to help them and educate them through that, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to sit there. We're trying to capture that game, capture the moment of just um, what it takes, that grit, that grind to get where they are today. And just the stories we heard you tell us today, it just shows um, how much that you care for each one of your, um, the players that you have and just you even growing up um, in the game that you have, it just shows the um, drive, dedication that you have from what we've heard today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, like I said, it's it's a blessing to be a part of these young men's lives, and and um, you know this this job isn't for the weak. I can tell you that. Um, you know, it's 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 always an adventure, uh, something new every single day, and um, I'll say this about my profession: there's a group of guys who um are transactional and there's a group of guys who are life enhancers and i was taught to be a life enhancer and i will continue to be that and i don't see myself doing anything else until i'm in the grave so i'll be doing that until uh i'm in the grave hopefully um when they bury me my body will still look good you know because i work out all the time I'll leave a, a, a very good looking corpse. So, hey, I just want to borrow some of your muscle. That's all I ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just transfer it. Just transfer it to me. <laughs> uh, I do have another question for you. So, how has like the impact of social media like impacted sports? Cause now, like, I mean, I think about, I, I, I follow, you know, just about everything and, you know, to, you know, hear about people talk about, you know, people getting traded before, mm -hmm. and, you know, the teams even find out about it or just rumors that be leaking out, whether it be, you know, Watson went and out of Houston and stuff like that. Like how, like how much of it is really like real or how much of it is like really hyped up because of social media or so I was just wondering if you could just talk a little bit about how social media has impacted the game. Well, social media um, has done a couple things. One, uh, there's a lot of fake news out there, especially in regards to roster news and all that. Uh, us agents know that there's a lot of BS and sometimes even agents put BS out there to confuse folks. Um, and it's, a lot of it is true too. Um, but, you know, it, social media has clouded some things, but also social media has uh, provided opportunities for uh, people uh, where in the past they wouldn't have uh, received those opportunities. I mean, there's, there's lots of players who make a lot of money off of social media. Uh, I've been involved in deals with uh, a lot of our guys using social media as another uh, stream of income. I mean, that's just part of the game. Now, 
uh, it's not going to match what you make on the field, but it is something that uh, can help you create leverage for when, um, you know, it's contract uh, negotiating time. You know, you don't have to take those pennies that they throw at you at first, you know, because that first initial pass from the team, you know, they're going to try to see uh, what you're made of and they're going to try to see if you're going to take the bait. Uh, and I, I'm glad I'm an educator because my guys know uh, that we're not going to just take old any old deal. You know, we're going to take the best deal and we're not going to lose leverage when we have it. Um, you know, but social media has really created opportunities, but it also gives a false sense of reality as well. Um, and that part is difficult uh, to help, uh, you know, with these young men because, um, man, man, that 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 cloud that's in some of these guys' heads, man, it's whew, it's, it's hard to get through. You know, you gotta, it's like it's like chopping through the forest, man, and it's just more leaves and trees and you know, snakes and everything you got cut off, you know, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenge, but you have to do it. You know, that's part of the job. Uh, so again, it's positive. It's a positive, it's a gift and a curse, you know, social media. I, I think that's accurate all the way. It is a gift and a curse, you know, depending on who's using it. And what it's what is being used for? Well, and and another thing too. I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, social media has helped players tell their stories, and and yeah. uh, and 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 part of their story, uh, and now in this current climate, is uh, find a voice to help people who. And again, a majority of uh, Af Af I'm the majority of uh, the NFL is African American male. You know, so that voice being heard uh, about making sure that uh, that people understand that we want uh, we want our families to be better, we want our communities to be better, uh, we want everyone to value us as human beings. Um, we want to move the needle towards uh, America truly being great. Mm -hmm. And they have that platform uh, and that stage. I'm glad they're using it to uh, push the narrative of uh, inclusion and uh, equality. And not just the black players. I mean, you're seeing a lot of the white players are doing it too. And it's a, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a, it's a beauty. And hopefully that continues to be contagious. Sometimes I, uh, I get discouraged because you look at some of the uh, comments and, and posts um, from people opposing it and posing that, posing that message and, and that it, it's discouraging, but you got to keep pushing. You got to keep uh, pushing towards uh, where we want to be. I totally agree with that. Well, that wraps up the first part of our uh, podcast segment. So now we're going to we're gonna loosen up a little bit. We're gonna trans. We're gonna transition into our our rapid fire segment. So it's just the the game within the game podcast. So we kind of ask ask some silly questions, and just to you know just have a little fun. To and, and uh, we, me and Brady, we we play a game amongst amongst each other to just try to figure out you know what people is gonna say, or um, we kind of have like a running tab of uh, of a scoreboard for us. Uh, so my question for you is: Are you ready to play this game? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. So, the first question: You have a pick. You have a you have a chance to either pick Tom Brady or Peyton Manning on your team. Who are you picking? Oh, ah, uh, man, I'm picking Peyton Manning. Picking Peyton Manning because uh, I know I I, I know with any offense <laughs> Wait, he's going to be. I know with any <laughs> offense he's, 
<laughs> with any offense, he's going to be all right because uh, he was he was like a computer. Even though Tom Brady's great, he's the GOAT, and he got seven rings, man. But I've, I've heard from way too many people who played with him uh, that he is a computer. So I'm going with Peyton Manning. Man, I was always shaking my head out there because I'm a huge Brady fan. I have <laughs> just hanging up and huge Michigan fan too, as you can see behind with all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I got I gotta go with Peyton Manning, man. I and I, I base my opinion on people who I know personally who played with Peyton Manning. You know, so and Tom Brady's a goat, but I, I, in my team, if I'm GM, I'm picking Peyton Manning. Oof. I like the pick. I'm not. I'm not mad at the pick. I I pick. I pick brains over a, a lot of things. Brains cover up a lot of things. You know. Hey man, and, that dude's a computer. Uh, <laughs> you know. He, you know. Honestly, he could have won more if it wasn't for like so many different things that went against him when his time being a, with and his for his time being in Indianapolis. So, oh. Uh, I, another quick question before before I, I turn it over Brady asks this question. Uh, if you had a chance to, uh, you know, you have your franchise and you get your, you get your pick of of any quarterback, you know, it could be all time or ever. Who are you picking to start your franchise? Oh, man, it's tough. Oh, uh, man. Any any quarterback? Any quarterback, you name it. Oh, in this current climate and in the with these rules, man. Oh man, man, that Pat Mahomes, man, is something different, man. In this, in, in these rules, in this this current climate, man, because you gotta in 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 the way football is being played now, you gotta be mobile. Mm-hmm. You gotta be accurate man and you gotta have you gotta have some stuff in your trick bag that i mean and which pat mahomes does man he got some he got some throws that only one other person aaron Rodgers, can make um he, he got some sidearm throw, throws it's just unbelievable so i gotta go with pat pat mahomes man right now that dude's something different man yeah, I I definitely agree with that. <laughs> I I'd go with that too. I'd be in a yeah. So I still yeah. Uh, he's about what he does. Yeah, man, that dude Pat, he's some different. So going off of another football question, so um, and we know you play for the Jets, but if you could choose a team that you'd want to play for, what team would that be? Oh, back when I was playing. Either that, uh, yeah, I don't know. either one. Yeah, oh, be, or now, be, yeah. if I was, oh, well, see, I can't really, I can't really answer this question because, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pick a favorite team now. Let me just go okay. back to when I was playing. That's fair. When I was playing, uh, and I love the Jets. They gave me an opportunity. Um, but man, you know what? Man, the Colts, man, mm. that would have been great. Back when I was playing, ooh, yeah. yeah. The Colts, that would have been great, man. That offense was rolling, but it's either the Colts or the Rams. And actually, I'll give the slight edge to the Rams. I'll give the slight edge to the Rams. Um, you know, those early 2000 Rams were pretty good. And the St. Louis Rams with the Marshall Falk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that offense was really, really good. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, all football type of question. Are you, do you prefer TV shows or movies? Oh, movies all day. Okay. I like TV shows, but movies. I'm a, yeah, I'm a movie guy. Okay. See, I like TV shows. I, I haven't found one person yet that can agree with me on TV shows. Like, I don't get me wrong, I love my movies, but I don't know. Some of our good TV shows always get me. Oh yeah, I mean, now uh, I'm a I'm a big Girlfriends fan though. Love okay. Girlfriends. Okay. You know, that's one of my favorite TV shows. And uh, I was just talking about this the other day. 
you know, everybody likes the original four girlfriends. But I was, you know, I actually told a couple of my clients too. I said, you need to get a Monica. I don't know if you remember Monica. She wasn't <laughs> the original four. She was Will's, you know, girl. Uh, and now everybody says, well, Monica was a gold digger. I didn't see her as that. I, she always put Will in the position to be great. She always pressed him to be great. She always wanted him to be better than he was yesterday. And she, you know, she kept herself presentable, uh, like, hey, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be the trophy wife. Uh, and I'm going to make sure you looking good. I'm going to make sure you great, too. That's the woman you got you got hook up with, Monica. But anyway, that's a little side note. But if you want to talk about TV shows, Girlfriends was a great show. Monica, that's that would be definitely the per person I'm picking. Okay, okay. Yeah, I love it. So we go a little uh, more into that in the off topic one. Just what is one of your uh, favorite like Bible verses that you've um, come to live and grow by? Uh, Philippians four thirteen. You know, I can do I can do all all things through Christ who strengthens me, and it's one of the first Bible verses my father used to tell me. You know, he hits me with Bible verses all the time. Uh, and that was one of the, that was one of the ones that kind of resonated with me because, you know, you use that Bible verse, um, you know, going into games, going into a contract negotiation, going into, you know, work situation. I mean, uh, even when you feel like you're down, uh, that verse can kind of lift you up. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely number one on the list. Amen to that. Amen to that. All right. Um, okay. So let me ask you this. Who had the better football career? You or your father? Oh, definitely. My, well, I'll say this. Of course, he had the better. He had the better professional career because he played longer and I mean he had more success uh -huh. but in high school me at my peak and dad at his peak it's it's no I mean he was in the high school all-american I was you know yeah. um and he didn't win the state championship I did you know now he would agree but he would in publicly he would agree <laughs> uh, but privately he would say if he was in high school and I was in high school it wouldn't be a matchup but I I beg to differ Ooh. I you know I was I was a little I was a little bit taller and I know I was probably yeah I was faster he was thicker and bigger than I was but he wouldn't be able to cover me in football and then in basketball um yeah he yeah he would beat me in basketball in high school but I was pretty good in basketball too. But football, yeah, I had a better career. Okay. Uh, Brady, you about to say something? No, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I got I got another question there. So, okay, so in, in your pops' heyday, in your heyday, who would outlift each other, you or your father? <laughs> well, when is the heyday? Because... Because he was a line, he, see, he was a linebacker. That's unfair, you know. Okay, okay I'll say okay. this: at, at forty years old, at forty, I think I'm gonna. I would beat my father in the lift off at forty on okay. some lifts. Okay. Um. On some lifts, I can be. I think I can beat him. I can beat him maybe on a, a bench. He would beat me on the squat. Uh, at 40 um and on a deadlift i think i can get them at 40 you know okay. so at 40 i think i got the edge but in the 30s yeah he got me there he okay. got me in all the 30s and he got me in the 22 because he was a linebacker i was a wide yeah. receiver yeah you know? yeah true that true that true that okay okay um next is uh oatmeal raisin cookie or a chocolate chip cookie oh chocolate chip that's from cookie cottage best cookies in the world i understand that <laughs> uh 
Um, Brady, do you have anything else? I don't think I have any other questions. Okay. Rapid fire. Yeah, that man. I I, don't know, I always love our rapid fire segment. This this whole interview was amazing. So I just appreciate your time. Oh, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, you know, I always want to uh, uh, shine a bright and bright light. You know, uh, in our industry, uh, I always want to represent uh, the city well because I know uh, because I've been told on a few uh, occasions that uh, there are people who uh, look up to me. They, there's, there's people that obviously looked up to my father and his partner, Eugene. And um, what I want to do is um, help encourage the next Eugene Parker, Roosevelt Barnes, Jovan Barnes uh, to be greater than we was and are. Um, and that will push our industry forward um, towards where it should be, you know, where you know, towards greatness. Yeah, I like that. So um, just the final wrapping up, where can um, our listeners and viewers like find you at social media wise? Uh, JB Sports Agent uh, on, well, on Instagram uh, and Twitter, uh, JB Sports Agent. Um, I don't use Twitter that much. I know I need, everybody says I need to use it more. I barely am on it, but I'm on Instagram a whole bunch. Um, you know, I show a lot of our players' workouts and and uh, some of their uh, highlights and, and and contract highlights, stuff like that. So uh, I'm on Instagram the most. You know, so JB Sports Agent, uh, that's my Instagram handle. All right, thank you for that. And uh, for listeners and viewers, you can follow us at uh, Instagram at capturing underscore the underscore game underscore pod. You can find us at CTG underscore podcast on Twitter and then search us up on capture the pod, capture the game podcast on YouTube and follow us on Facebook as well. Um, again, I'd like to thank you, uh, Javon, for um, joining us today and um, having this wonderful conversation with us. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, you guys stay warm up there in uh, Indiana. I'm going to still enjoy this uh, warm weather down here in Florida. <laughs> just, bring, just bring something back with you. That's all I yeah. have. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. <laughs>